Welcome to the channel Excellence, where we strive for excellence. We strive to be one better than what we were yesterday. Sitting here, we're going to listen to Steve Harvey. See what he got to say for the day. If you live your life in expectations, that's what happens to you. If you live your life in despair, that's what happens to you. If you say all men are dogs, you're going to meet every last one of them. I'll never be rich. You won't. You won't. The moment you change the frequency that your tower emits, the moment you change that frequency, different things come back to you. I'm telling you this how it works. I'm going to just say this fast as I can. I'm going to let you go. If you change your attitude, you change your altitude. Listen, the reason you came to this show today was to be entertained. But a lot of y'all came to this show, and I ain't because you needed to hear this. All I am is a piece of conduit. I'm a piece of pipe. God just tell me what to say. I don't pick what I'm going to say at the end of the show. God just tell me what to say. Somebody in here needed to hear this. Somebody just needed that little moment, man, to get you to thinking a little bit differently so you can get the life God got for you. God wants to show you all. He wants people that he can use as an example and say, hey, this is what I do for people. If you call on me and you believe in me, this is what I do for people. I raised my hand a long time ago. Use me. Show them, show them how you take an old hoover. Tell them how you take a street boy. Tell them, show how you can take somebody ain't got no education. Take me. Take somebody that don't even talk that good. Take somebody who flunked out of school on his third marriage, lost everything, lived in a car for three years. Take me and show somebody what you can do through me. Guess what he did? He picked me up. He put me in a world I knew nothing about. God will do the same thing for you. Change your attitude, you change your altitude. Life seemingly does not wish to waste success on the unprepared. Life says, why waste a fortune on this person? They're not prepared to do the right thing. They're not prepared to use it wisely. If a fortune was bestowed upon this unprepared person, it would probably be wasted. The people that could have been touched won't be touched. What could have been done won't be done because this fortune will have been wasted on the unprepared person. So not only look for fortune, not only look for the promise, but prepare yourself and ask of yourself, what can I do to make myself ready? Because remember, life was designed not to give us what we want, not to give us what we need, but life was designed to give us what we deserve. Every value in life must be paid for. And those that pay are the ones that get it. It says those that give receive. Someone says, I wish to receive, I wish to receive. You don't have to concentrate on the receive. Just become a good giver. It says, those that search will find. Someone says, well, I need to find some good ideas to help change my life for the future. Then to find good ideas, that doesn't come because you need them. Because it comes because you search for them. If you want good ideas, you've got to go after them. You've got to go to the class, you've got to go to the workshop, you've got to go to the training, go to the book, right? You've got to go to the journal. Right? Go where good ideas are being taught. Go searching, go looking. Because good ideas are not going to be wasted on those that are not seeking, searching, well prepared. So, prepare yourself to be ready for fortune when it comes. To be ready for challenge when it comes. To be ready for opportunity when it comes. Opportunity comes along and passes by the person that is not well prepared. I want to prepare myself this year for next year. Yes, I wish to be effective this year, but I'm also thinking of ways. How could I be better? How could my ideas be more powerful? How could they be sharper, more clear? How could I reach some people uh, next year that I perhaps can't reach this year? I haven't reached deep enough into my own soul to affect some people. Some people just pass by and say, hey, what a good speech. But how could I make it stronger than that, deeper than that, more powerful than that? I cannot be as powerful as I could be next year. You know, you can't go to the, to the 10th grade and the 5th grade. 
you just got to go through the grades but the more you are prepared when the tenth grade finally comes now you can cash in and get two times three times five times more value from it by being prepared I want to do my best this year for Herbalife, but I also want to get ready for next year, 1999. And then when the year 2000 comes at the turn of the century, I want to be well equipped by language, by instinct, by temperament, by personality, by influence, to really be valuable. That's my goal. I'm sure it's your goal. If you really want to develop the power of positive thinking as a habit, as a lifestyle, as a strategy for success, then decide right now to find something to appreciate from any seemingly negative person or situation and develop the habit of giving compliments. See, if you really want to have some more positive feelings in your life, you got to keep focusing on what's right. you got to get curious. And most importantly, you got to find something to appreciate even in the tough times. Because in reality, as we've talked about so often before, the toughest times in your life sometimes provide you with the real resources to change your life. So what we've got to do is find something to appreciate, not someday when things work out. We've got to appreciate where we are right now. And this is something I talked to my daughter Jolie about today. Because she's in an experience today where I thought, well, gosh, she's not being very positive. I'm going to talk about positive thinking. She came in to see me and she's feeling really sad. She's feeling really down, feeling really frustrated. And you know what her problem is? Her problem is she tried out and won the right to be amongst three girls who danced in the electric light parade at Disneyland. And that was about three or four months ago. She has been going there after school every day, driving from San Diego up to Anaheim, burning herself into the ground, getting up and going to school to be a straight-A student still, and trying to visit with her family and her boyfriend. And she found herself maxing out. Now think about her problem. Her problem is that she gets to be at Disneyland and fulfill a childhood fantasy. Her problem is that she loves her family and wants to be with them as well. Her problem is she loves to be at school and really do that. Her problem is she has so much abundance that she has to figure out how to get all in one day and she can't do it. She's physically burning out. That's her problem. You know what? She says, gosh, I want to be home. I want to be with you guys and all these things. I, want, I don't want to miss out on all this great time we have together. I want to be with you guys. I said, well, honey, look what you're doing. She goes, yeah, I, well, I don't want to miss out on Disneyland either. I don't want to miss out on my career and what I'm doing and what's going on. What's the problem? The problem is she's finding out what's negative in both situations. She's focusing on what she doesn't have instead of what she does have. Now, I could be negative about that and say, gosh, be more positive. But you know what? In reality, I realized... Being negative in this situation may not be bad. What do I mean? I don't mean being negative. I mean being intelligent. I mean being critical in your thinking. Seeing what you don't have is sometimes useful too. This is what I promised you in terms of the power of negative thinking. Here's how negative thinking can be useful. I sat down with her and I said, honey, I said, let's look at the advantages and disadvantages of both. Let's not just be positive. Let's look at it. The whole thing is positive. Let's know that no matter what you choose, you've won. You have what most people dream about. But for a moment, let's be a little bit critical. What do you love about Disneyland? What is great about it? What is it giving you? And let's ask the question that maybe we don't ask very times when we're just being purely positive. What isn't it giving you? What are you afraid about? What are you missing by being there? What's great about being at home more? What's great about those things? What's not great about that? Be honest, if you were there, what might happen that's not good? What might you miss out on? And you know what? By getting there to use both positive and negative thinking, or to be more accurate, positive thinking and some critical thinking, looking at what isn't there for the moment, what she is missing out on, and allowing that pain to motivate her, she was able to clarify what's most important in her life and what's the best way to do that. And she came up with a plan that totally empowered her. After a couple hours of conversation and fun, she looks better than she has in about six months because she's finally resolved what's most important. And sometimes just being positive and keeping a stiff upper lip isn't enough. Sometimes you got to stop and say, I am positive. I'm going to approach this from a positive way. I'm going to stay in a positive state. But I'm going to ask some questions some people may think of as negative, which is, what isn't working? Because if you're not willing to look at what isn't working, you can get yourself in trouble. I've been evangelizing one particular message for two decades, and it's you can lead without a title. You know, the seduction of society is that you have to have formal power to make a difference, and that's just a lie the world has sold us. The reality is you can lead without a title, and really the difference or the defining trait of a leader is you shift from victimhood see victims love making excuses and if you recite your excuses long enough you actually think they're going to be true i see it around the world you know people saying these things like i don't have time to run or i don't i'm not good enough to be great at my work or this would never work or i don't live in the right country or life is hard and the more you recite those excuses, you think they're true. So let go of your excuses, start getting some results done, and over time, you're going to rise to your world class. 
I kept my job at McKinley and part time I started in the financial services industry and started to build a team of people and started to get my licenses and that transition and I struggled like every upstart entrepreneur does. It I takes like to, three to five years until you really uh, get a few clients, you know. In, in, in any business, I don't care if it's yeah. financial services, tech, uh, dry cleaners, uh, entrepreneurs, the first five years is just full of false starts. Yeah. You get it going, then you don't. You get it going, you take a step forward, you take three back. It's constant false starts. It's constantly thinking you have it going. It's constantly negotiating in your mind the price you're paying. Is it worth it? Should I quit? Should I give in? I'm constantly, I spent the first five years daily contemplating quitting. Yeah. All the time. It, was not fun. time. it wasn't fun. And, <coughs> and there's just a part of you, I think, in anything you're doing when you're struggling, is this really for me? Is this my destiny? Should I be doing this? And we misread failure from some sign. You know, is this a sign I shouldn't be doing it? You know, is this a sign I am, you know, not cut out for this instead of looking for signs that you can win, right? And so I spent the first five years literally trying to find ways to quit, trying to find ways to get out, struggling and struggling and struggling. And I went broke. I lost a car. I had the water turned off in my place. I, you know, I, had a, I, had a, I had bought out my first house. I ended up having it foreclosed mm -hmm. on eventually. So I'm not that house with the unicorns that you saw, <laughs> right? Or my beach place. Like that's all the after. People don't realize that there were just years and years of, of grinding and struggling and worrying in the beginning. And then, then I made some mental changes and some shifts yeah. that altered my life. Then again, you can think about the world this way. You can think about it as your orderly little plan. That's a place, and you can think about it as the place that things that disrupt your plan comes from. That's another place. This is a bigger place than this, because there's an endless number of things that can disrupt your plan, and only a tiny number of them that can, you know, that will help you work it out. So part of the question then, too, is like, are you the friend of your plan, or are you the friend of the thing that disrupts your plan? And I would say you should work to become the friend of the thing that disrupts your plan, because there's a lot of that. And then if you become the friend of the thing that disrupts your plan, then you be, you start to develop strength in proportion to the to the disruptive force. And that's really what you want. You want to be able to implement your plan, obviously, but you want to be able to take on the consequences of error and learn from it. And then, then you win constantly, because even if something goes sideways, you think there's something to be derived from this. That's wisdom, fundamentally. Your brain is divided into two halves, positive and negative, good and evil. It don't function on nothing else. Ain't no neutral ground in your brain. Each half of your brain has millions of factory workers on each side. You got a million factory workers on the positive side. You got a million factory workers on the negative side. At the forefront, of each one of those factories in your brain is a foreman. You got foreman positive and you got foreman negative. You are in charge. You're the boss of the factory. You wake up in the morning and you say, man, I don't feel myself today. I got up on the wrong side of the bed. Foreman negative. Harry hears that. He steps to the front. He said, what did you say? You say, I said, I woke up on the wrong side of the bed there. I'm not myself. He says, you got it right away. He said, hey, the boss just woke up and said he's not a morning person. He's having a bad day today, and he ain't feeling himself. Let's get to work. The million factory workers start producing thoughts to justify what you just said. So now guess what? Man, I hate my alarm clock went off this morning. I got to get out here in this traffic. I will drive down here today. I don't even like these people on my job. And on and on and on. And your day starts tumbling into what you thought at the top of the day. You can wake up in the morning and you say, you know what? Today is going to be a great day today. I expect something really good to happen for me today. Form and positive terms of mind and go, all right, let me have your tips. The boss is having a great day today. He's expecting some wonderful things to happen. And man, let's get it going. And they start manufacturing thoughts. Same way. Man, this is going to be great today. That's how your mind works 24 7. It never turns off. You have got to change the way you think. It is the whole determining factor of where you go in life. We are all where we are today because we thought ourselves to this position. 
If you don't like the position, think yourself out of it. Change your attitude, you change your altitude. It's not about your aptitude, it's about your attitude. A hundred and twenty percent, give it all you got. Because often in life, you will never get to the next level. Just off balance. A lot of it has to do with attitude. Once you go to work and you put in work, no matter what the situation is, if you want to put in 120%, I guarantee you one day you'll wake up three years from now, five years from now, ten years, I don't know, and you'll make exactly what you want to make. 